Hi, I'm Steve Hassan, and I'm delighted to have with me Dr. Mary Teresa Webb, who's written this book, Following Jesus in the Age of Trump. And um, I want to thank you very much, Dr. Webb, for agreeing to chat with me today. Well, thank you, and it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And uh, I see your book behind you. I have been talking it up to a lot of people, a lot of my Christian friends. So uh, uh, hold was, it up. I, I, I'm sticking it in the background. So, so thank you for calling attention to it. And um, as you know, from reading the book yourself, I talk about that, you know, my perception that the media is mischaracterizing the base of, of uh, the true believers of Donald Trump as evangelical Christians. And I've talked to quite a few evangelical Christians who say that they don't think that he's acting as a religious leader or God is using him. But unlike you, they're not willing to speak or much less write a book about it. So I wanted to take you up on your kind offer to uh, do this interview with me. Well, one of the things that I have done as an evangelical Christian myself is, is to look around for others who, who have, are similar, similarly inclined. So uh, I joined the Red Letter Christian Movement, which is a, a movement to really bring back who Jesus really was and, and what, you know, what he stands for and what he teaches. So that's been exciting for me. Great. Is there a link to that movement that we can add to our blog? Oh, definitely. Um, okay. It's Tony. You'll, you'll, you'll give it to us and we'll add that. Okay, uh, good. Uh, absolutely. I did do an interview with uh, Dr. Warren uh, Throckmorton, who is an evangelical yeah. Christian and, and someone who knows social psychology and used my work. And I have that blog up on my website. Unfortunately, due to my uh, lack of total being uh, a, a perfectionist, uh, he, he, his quote didn't get in the final uh, edition of this book. But I'm hoping to rectify that in the next oh, edition. Oh, good. <clears throat> well, I, there, there haven't been many people that are speaking out. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I've discovered when I've talked to, to clergy and I've, I've suggested that maybe they ought to be talking more about, about this whole situation with, with Trump because you've got people who are like uh, Gray, um, um, Billy Graham's son, who right, is- right. who Franklin is Franklin Graham. Franklin Graham. Loves Vladimir Putin and thinks he's a <laughs> great religious figure apparently and then then he's got this new person Paula Paula White who's yes. advising him and all of these evangelical so-called evangelical Christians are giving um, evangelical Christianity a bad name and um, and that is disturbing to many of us because we think nobody's going to be you know wanting to to even believe if if, if they got these leaders who are saying, who are so praising Trump. One of the things that's happening is that um, they, they, they say that he's been chosen by God, right. uh, by, by um, Cyrus, and, and that uh, as long as God has chosen him, that we can't do anything about it. And yeah. that's, that's very dangerous. It is extremely dangerous. And I might add a personal note that when I was in the moon cult, in the right. 70s, uh, Sun Myung Moon was at the National Prayer Breakfast of a, a group that I write about called The Family and was ushered to the White House to meet with Nixon. And then next, Steve Hassan and other Moonies are fasting because God wanted Nixon to be president during I know. the Watergate fiasco. Um, well, I, I know some of the people who started that prayer breakfast movement, and I've been to one of the prayer breakfasts, um, so, and, and I know about the family, so I think it was very interesting that you pointed that out in your book, because there is a certain theological bent or th theological position that they have, and the fact that somebody has been chosen to be, that God has chosen this person to be president when we elect our president, and it's right. the people who chooses the president, and, and not God doesn't choose him directly. So right. that's... 
Yeah, it's incredible. So um, I want to I want to open open uh, the doors for you to give your message. You know, if there are other Christians, if if uh, if Franklin Graham is listening, you know, what would you t tell him about? I mean, you have a doctorate, correct? And 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 and, and you've been a, a, a pastoral counselor and missionary. What would you say to anybody who's a says they're a Christian <laughs> and just blindly follows Donald Trump. Well, it's interesting because I have a friend who took the book and gave it to somebody who works for, for Franklin Graham and asked them to give it to him, whether he'll read it or not. Mm. The difficulty is that people who have this strong belief that, that Trump has been chosen by God and that all you, you just pray for him and do we pray for him every day? And, and of course we pray for him. We're called to pray for him, but I pray that he'll get the help he needs. Uh, and, uh, and right now he's unfit to be president. And I think that's what we have to look at, that I don't think God would choose anybody that isn't fit to be president. And that's, that's one of my concerns. Big and one of, one of the reasons I wrote the book is I start with a dialogue because when I first had the inspiration to write the book, I began to dialogue with other evangelical Christians to see what they thought. And I got some very interesting responses. And that first of all, well, um, he's not for abortion and I am not for abortion. So, so that's the reason, or, um, he's, he wants to keep, you know, he wants to, um, keep out immigrants. We have too many immigrants in our country. And there, there's some very interesting rationale that really have nothing to do whether he's fit to be president or not. Right. And that's why I think it's very important that you as a mental health person and the metal and the psychiatrists and psychologists have written a, a very important book to, um, to point yes, out. In the case things. of Donald Trump, if I may <laughs> just add, yeah. edited by Bandy Lee. Yes, so that was, that's a very important, important book. Mm -hmm. And I have friends who are psychiatrists who are saying, yes, this is true, and we need to say something about it. But they will, it's like we're talking to the choir, that we're talking to people who believe the way we believe. So I think it's very important that we begin to talk to people who believe differently, who are, who are very supportive of Trump and getting them to see what is going on. And that's, that's a challenge I think both of us have. Yes, and, and from my point of view, I'm Jewish, but from my point of view, what's missing is very strong public appeals to like, let's read the scripture. Right. And read what Jesus teaches. Um, and uh, I'm not hearing that. I'm not seeing that in, in the media at all. And I do think no. it's incredibly important. Uh, but I do have a whole chapter in my book about Nazi Germany, mm. because I think that, and I have heard people say this, and I did a lot of research, and it's, it's I think, because Trump is, uh, he's anti-Semitic, he's, uh, uh, he's racist, and, and it, 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 all his actions indicate that. So uh, that's very dangerous. Yeah. And, I th and I think that's what we have to point out is throughout history, when we have something that's happened in history, then point out to others, you know, what happened before, before in history, and this is going to be happening again and is happening again. Yeah, I do want to comment from the Trump supporter point of view. Uh, there are people who would argue with your statement that Trump is anti-Semitic because they, they would point to his daughter because converted right. to Judaism uh, and Jared Kushner and what they're doing with Netanyahu and Israel. And, and, and a, a lot of people don't get that um, the people who are wanting a revelation and apocalypse to happen in the Middle East, they, they really don't accept that Jews can go to heaven without accepting Jesus. Right. And they really don't <laughs> love Jews. Uh, they may say that they love Jews, but in the, in, in the, in the big picture, they don't recognize Judaism as a legitimate path to God, you know, permanently. No, they don't. 
The, the Catholic Church, I believe, in the 60s issued a statement saying, actually, God made a covenant with Abraham. That's eternal. So we can't say that anymore about Jews, that they're Christ killers. And oh. so there was a major shift. Oh, I know. That. That, was, that, that was very true for a while. I thought that had, had changed, which is one of the reasons one of my chapters is entitled The Jewish Jesus, mm -hmm. because people do not realize that he 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 came as a Jew in the in the Jewish culture, yeah, and and to understand what that meant uh, during the Roman the Roman Empire times, I think is very important for people to realize. Yeah, I'm really glad um, that you make that point. I would also uh, just mention a book by <laughs> a uh, Baptist minister, Harvey Cox, uh, called Common Prayers which he wrote for Christians to understand more about Judaism, because that was his thesis of the book, that if you, if you love Jesus, you should know about Judaism, because he was oh, a yes. Christian. And, and if you understand what Judaism teaches, then his words kind of have a 3D and more significant, you know. Well, I, I belong to a, a denomination that, that really captures that. And what, one of the things that I have done with my Jewish friends is make a comparison with, that our prayer book is very similar to, to your to your prayer book, and uh -huh. many of the prayers that we have are based in are really Jewish prayers, uh -huh. and Great. people don't realize that. Great. So, um, let's. Could you give us some words of Jesus that go fly in the face of the kinds of policies that are that are coming out of the White House? Since well, the, I. I I think you love your enemies. Um, uh, the particular one that I'm interested in is uh, is welcome strangers, and we don't. And one of the thing, one of the things that we know about the Trumpism politics is that he he really is not in favor of immigration. Right. And and if we really take the words of Jesus seriously, we welcome immigrants into this country. We always have welcomed immigrants into this country. And um, uh, that's who we are. We're a nation of immigrants. Right. And, and, and I think that's, that's very clear. Loving yeah. your enemies, um, do good to those who, who hate you. Um, he was, Jesus is, is a peacemaker mm -hmm. um, by, by nature. So he would be against all military options. He would, he right. would be for diplomacy mm -hmm. and, um, all of those things. And of course, I, I focus on the Sermon on the Mount, which the Beatitudes and what it means to follow. If you really do believe in Jesus, then you believe in what he says in the Beatitudes and how you should treat people. And, um, and, and he honors all of those who are poor and persecuted. And um, that's, it's very clear. In, in the I, words, am I is my understanding correct that he preached that my kingdom is not of this world? Yes, and and that he also said something like, "Render to Caesar what Caesar." Mm -hmm. Like the like the, uh, the 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 political authorities are not what what his his. Well, well that's a very that's a very interesting. Uh, I have a section in my book on on that particular passage because. Uh, that is used often by evangelical Christians to say, well, we need to support uh, the president, not only who is he elected, because, but he was chosen by God, right. and, and therefore we need, to, um, uh, we need to support him and not be against him, because if you're against him, that's against the Bible. Well, that particular passage, when Jesus said that, that was an argument between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And one wanted to pay taxes to Rome, and, and the other group did not want to pay taxes to Rome, and they were trying to trap Jesus. Mm -hmm. So he came up with, you know, he came up with the coin and, and, and didn't get trapped. So he didn't want to be trapped. So oh. that's a very, I mean, I did a, an analysis of that particular passage. Great. And I, I hope people will pick up your book. I'll, I'll hold it up again. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Jesus in the Age of Trump. And and, Jesus, and what was Jesus' teaching about wealthy people who, who, who aspire for making lots of money? <laughs> well, he was opposed to that. Uh, and he's, he was favoring the poor. And if you were, if you were wealthy, um, 
then he urged people to, you know, give your wealth over to give your money away to help other people oh. and to always, you know, to always be conscious of those who had less than you, than you did. And, um, cause he said, do, um, you love your God, love the God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and your neighbor is yourself. Yes. And, and you have to consider your neighbor. If your neighbor is needy, then you should give help support your neighbor. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what was the saying about it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than yes. a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven? Than a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven, yes. Then was that goes. a correct translation with the camel going through the eye of the needle as far as you know? Uh, no, I haven't really done much study with that, but I think it's, uh, uh, he used alliteration and he, he I think uh, as many of the rabbis did in, in Jesus' time, he spoke in a, in a way to help people uh, in their daily lives understand by using references that people could relate to. And, mm -hmm. and, and make it kind of absurd that a camel would go through the eye of a needle. Mm -hmm. And that's the way, the rab that was a rabbinical way of teaching, as a matter of fact. Uh-huh, yeah, telling metaphors and stories. Yeah. So um, I'm very grateful to you for, for writing this book. You read The Cult of Trump. Are there any other uh, points from my book that resonated for you or that was important for you when you read it? Well, I read the similarities, I think, um, if you look at Hitler and Mussolini, if you even look at Herod in the time of Jesus, I think there were some similarities. Mm -hmm. well, Herod particularly interested me because he, he had, a, I think he had a really, a, a similar kind of a, a mental health problem. I'm not sure what it was, but he would, he would you know, he would be, he would go on these building sprees and then he would, uh, and then he would kill people, and, and he get very angry and upset. And he killed, killed members of his family, even. Mm -hmm. So um, there, there, he had. I mean, I haven't diagnosed it, but right. I would like to, you know, look at look at his diagnosis as what kind of a whether he was schizophrenic, whether he was, you know, um, malignant narcissist. Malignant <laughs> narcissist. Right. Yeah. And if if you look at uh, if you look at some of the leaders, some of the, the leaders that we have in this world, and one of the things that interesting that it's happening now under the impeachment process yeah. is we're beginning to look at President Johnson mm -hmm. and, and when he was impeached. And he has a similar kind of, I think, narcissistic uh, problem that Trump does. I don't, know whether you, I don't know whether you've looked at that or not, but... Not specifically while I was researching the book, um, but um, it, it just struck me that so many people um, were involved with cultic groups that were supporting Trump, the, in particular the, the New Apostolic Reformation right. leaders who claim to be apostles or prophets and they claim to get direct revelations and 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 cast out demons and do faith healings and tell their members to do fasts and pray all night prayer vigils and such and the people in those groups seem to be just totally f believing that if they don't follow what the uh, so-called apostle tells them they're disobeying jesus directly Yes, I know, I know that group. That's very, I've been involved with a, a healing group in, in a church that I went to, and um, they were very much into this apostolic movement. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of questions about it because um, there were some things about it that, 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 you know, the fact that you have to fast and, pr and pray and, um, and it can be, it, you can be, it's almost like saying pie in the sky, you know? if we do this and everything will be all right. 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 And that, that, unfortunately that's a lot of, of what's happening today. And there's another whole movement, which is, uh, it has to do with eschatology, which I touch on in my book, which is an end times theology I see. that, that you're, you're ushering in the end times and, and that Trump was chosen because we're very close to the end times so we can't upset what God is doing and that, you know, he's going to send Jesus again right away. And therefore, um, 
therefore we can't touch it. We can't touch anything that's happening. Right. And then there's the other side, which is uh, dominionism that is pre uh, preaching that we need to take over the government before Jesus can come back again. Well, that's, an, that's another whole, whole movement that Jerry Falwell was involved in that, where, where you, want to, you want to Christianize the nation. And right. so you're going to make a, you make, going to make a Christian nation. And in a sense, um, Trump uses that movement for his own purposes. Yeah, definitely. They, they use him for their own purposes. So right. it's, it's, that's really very dangerous. Yeah, indeed. So um, I want to thank you profoundly for, for speaking out and, um, and we'll do a blog and let people know how to reach you. And I would assume you might be open to doing other interviews and, yes. and mm -hmm. talks. And hopefully we can get so many more leaders to, to stand up and say, hey, wait a minute, you're giving Christianity a bad name. Yes, and that's that's what that's what we're afraid of. And Tony Campalo is one of the leaders of that, mm. um, of, of who was trying to reach out. Uh, Sojourners with Jim Wallace. There, all of us are are of the same mind that we need to reach out. That we we need to um, wake people up. And I I don't have the answer to that. I'm going to start at the first of the year. I'm going into a church and I'm going to look at. Uh, agreeing to disagree agreeably, which is the dedication of my book, right, so that right. people can listen to each other and talk, dialogue with each other, which we've lost in our culture, unfortunately. Yes. So, I mean, it sounds trite, but love, love, <laughs> love God, love, love others as you love yourself. Right. You know, um, and, and not hate you know, hate God and hate everybody else and not fear God and fear everybody else, but love. Right. And, and let's, let's bring people together, uh, uh, Americans in particular, who believe in the Constitution and the right. rule of law and the rights for people to believe and the rights to, for people not to believe a particular version of Christianity. And but it, one of the things that I that I'm um, upset about now is why do why do so many Republicans are becoming his what I call cult followers? Do you have any answer to that? Yes, um, I do. So the 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 thing is that every person has to deal with their own conscience. And when I was in the Moon Cult, I was cut off from my conscience. I was substituting the indoctrination of the cult and uh -huh. what they said was reality and kind of, so I, I, I allowed other people, including the cult leader, Moon, to speak for what God needed to do with me versus me looking in the mirror, reflecting, how do I feel about this and what do I think about the facts? And if, in fact, um, people have integrity, even if they are facing not getting reelected because they may not get the support of the White House. Right. I think the honorable thing is to still speak out and say, you know, we need to uphold the rule of law. And, and I'm hoping through this process of bringing facts forward that more Republicans will have a crisis of conscience and realize this is not what I want to be uh, connected with. Well, I really I, liked what you said in your book um, because you had a, a section in there as to how you, how you help people, mm -hmm. how you help people get out of a cult. And that is you try to reach what is of value to them, to in their inner core, what, is, what, what the values they hold that they are counter, countering by, by what they're doing. And we yeah. do that a lot when we're working in the field of addiction, because yes. if we're working with somebody who's under the influence, we yes. also try to get them to look at what are their core values, what do they really want in life, what means the most to them. And, and uh, I think that's, that's very important. And I don't know how we reach 
um, how we reach the followers in that way. So, I mean, it sounds uh, self-referential, but I really believe everyone needs to understand uh, that we're living in the age of influence and they need to understand the difference between ethical influence and unethical influence. Right. And ethical influence always it, it gives you informed consent. In other words, when, when you need facts and you need honesty right. and you need truth and, and not lies and confusion and gaslighting and projection and all kinds of other techniques that are, are being used right now, not only by Trump, but, but the leaders in the Republican Party trying to switch the focus from Russia onto Ukraine is, yes. is, 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 is classic propaganda. And I think as Fiona Hill said when on her testimony, she said, this is what Putin wants. This yes. Is the Russian disinformation program. And so in answer of your question, is it possible that Russia has brainwashed our politicians? <laughs> the answer is yes. I think it is possible that they have been influenced by Russian agents uh, and possibly through Fox Media and Breitbart and, and, and Rush Limbaugh and the whole TBN, that there's been an infiltration of agents who really are using Christianity. It's, it's, almost, like they're, it's almost like they're using it to win a war. Um, they're, they're doing it through propaganda and, and through the influence process. And that's, that's typical Putin. As it a matter of really fact, is. and I've spent I've spent about a, you know about ten years uh, doing mission work in Russia. So, um, and the Russians are easily duped themselves because he controls the media. Exactly. So it's very much like what happened under Nazi Germany when when Hitler controlled the media, and that's. Yeah. Very good point. I just, I guess I want to just add that in, when the Soviet Union fell in 1991, I was right. brought to Moscow by a group of psychiatrists and psychologists who wanted to know about cults because all the cults from America were coming in to Russia. <laughs> I remember that. Yes, I was they, there. The like, time. what's up with cults? Like, and so I was teaching about the influence continuum and the bite model, and and everyone was taking notes. And they're like, "But, but you're just." I'm gonna do a bad Russian accent now. Uh, you are describing the whole system of pedagogy of the Soviet Union. <laughs> you, I know. Are, you, you understand? You are the. We would put dissidents in psychiatric hospitals who were complaining about the regime. I, no. I was there, I was there in 19, 1991 too. And um, that's, you know, it, they, I, was, I remember being taken into a museum that was supposed to be a history museum. And they finally, the, the guide would say, we uh, there was nothing in the museum and they said we've taken everything out because everything that was in this museum was a lie <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and and i had one other so with this group of psychiatrists and psychologists they're like so so you're you're this what you're teaching us is is you're counseling us uh -huh. i said if the shoe fits please you know, use it. And then, they, and then I was invited to speak to a group of high school uh, counselors from Siberia, I was told, who had never met a Westerner. And, and I had a translator and I said to them, I understand I'm the first Westerner you've ever met. You must have a lot of questions. Before I give a talk, please ask me your questions. And they looked like I had just said, you know, aliens had landed from the moon. <laughs> they, they, they were like looking we at- We don't ask questions. <laughs> that's exactly, what, and then finally someone in the back said, you don't understand, we take notes and you give a lecture, we don't <laughs> ask questions. I know I did a lot of teaching in those, in, in those during that time period um, because we were teaching about addiction and, and, and recovery. And um, some of my, my good friends who are psychologists and psychiatrists have now taken the lead and taken, uh, taken over. 
but yeah. it's uh, but their whole system of teaching when we tried to teach the western way of involving right. and asking questions and they didn't know what to do because right. everybody had been feeding them all this information right so from my point of view that's a political cult that yep. achieves state power right and 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 so when you when that fell people didn't have the equipment of how to think for themselves. And so they were going to be prone to some cult leader figure to t order them to tell them what reality is and such. Yep. But there's also a cyn cynicism attached to it too, because they, they also are hungry and they see the, the wealthy. Well, and, and they've also had um, uh, a lot of post-traumatic stress. Many of them came out of, uh, of that culture with post-traumatic stress and uh, they didn't know what to do. Um, right. You know, they, they had to deal with all of this abuse of the past. And, and, and one psychiatrist described it to me as that they were always underneath and now they had to learn to stand on their own two feet. Yes. And, exactly. and they still haven't stood on their own two feet because they've got the oligarchs and, um, exactly. and they've got Putin telling them what to do. Yeah, and even the million emigres to Israel, they're all still watching RT TV and, and tuned into all the Russian propaganda things. Oh, are they? Yeah, yeah. I think they are. And, and they're supporting uh, a very uh, uh, autocratic leader, Netanyahu, you know, because of know. security rather <laughs> than human rights and democracy. Yeah, we could discuss that. I have a cousin who is, uh, was lives there who uh, married a Jewish po um, poet. So mm -hmm. um, we, we could talk, we could do a whole nother. <laughs> do another one. <laughs> another one about but that. We're running out of time. I Before thought so. we wrap up, uh, any last thoughts you'd like to leave with our viewers and listeners? Well, I think it's very important that, that, that we keep at it. It's very discouraging the work that, you, that the message you're trying to get across, it's very discouraging the message that I'm trying to get across and others like me. And we're, we're, we're discovering where there's a lot of resistance, but one of the Beatitudes said we have to, we will face resistance and that's part of it. Right. So we're, we're kind of being prophets in a culture that's being taken over by propaganda mm. and, and by it, a cult-like um, atmosphere which is what's right. happening and and i and i do get discouraged and i'm sure you get discouraged but i want to encourage you and i hope you will encourage me i absolutely <laughs> want to encourage you and thank you and say the truth will set you free right you know right. so don't be afraid to seek for the truth and not just believe what you hear automatically from media but actually look at documents and truth does matter, facts do matter, science right. matters. Right, I agree with you 100%. I have a whole page in my book about, about the truth, the truth will set you free. Great, <laughs> one last flash of your book, following Thank the you. age of Trump. Thank you so much, Dr. Webb. Well, and, thank you uh, for inviting me. I enjoyed our conversation. Me too, for sure, okay. thank you.